Works and uh, yes, this way. Yeah. All right, <laughs> better. So you can never lost it. Um, yeah. So just to introduce you, uh, how uh, my name is. Uh, I will start uh, with uh, Tara, uh, who is uh, working for Betsy uh, on Director of Digital Corporation, Betsy International. Then we have uh, Brian, who is running. CCAD in the US uh, and uh, the CCAD is part of the Brazil as well. Um, and Marie, who uh, is a good old friend of mine, we worked together for many years, uh, who's uh, running supply for Vicars. And we have Greg here, who is going to name uh, Odilate. And you cannot believe modulating and mating by the fantastic friend of Papa from Monty Thank you. Thank you so much. The stage is yours. Thank you. Who um, in the audience, just raise your hands if you're working with curation, a curation platform, if you're actively in the curation business. Great. Okay. A few hands there. A few hands. We're kind of 50-50. It's good to get a lay of the land. Um, as Amir said, we've got a fantastic panel today talking about the evolution of um, curation and how it is changing technology for the ecosystem as we know it. And what's fantastic about the panel is we're all coming from different parts of the curation network. So um, we've gone through introductions, but first of all, I wanted to talk a little bit um, and hear from our panelists, our experts, on what curation is for their business and how it's helping their business and their clients. Greg, do you want to? Yeah, I think... What, wait, what's curation? We're on this panel? Curation? Yes. Yeah, oh, got it, got it, yes, okay. Um, no, cur curation for us. Um, you know, we look at the world of curation as being able to create me being able to create media and data packages at scale that drive uh, high performance and are extremely uh, privacy friendly in how we do that. And we look at the world of the data that goes into those in three ways. The first is utilizing audience data, first and or third party. The second is contextual, utilizing contextual signals, semantic targeting, linguistics, all those things. And then also f the final one is what we call cognitive data or predictive audience data that really drives how we would define an audience in a, very, in a cookie-less way uh, of, of what, we, what we operate in. And then the final aspect of this is moving data from what has traditionally been on the demand side back into the supply side because passing it through the supply chain really drives that scale, drives that performance, and becomes so much more privacy-centric than the old way of doing things. And so when we look at, uh, you know, how is it helping our clients, you know, for marketers, it's that performance, and that scaled performance aspect. For our publishers, it's the ability to take their O&O &O and extend it out with an audience extension program. And for retailers, it's about creating a monetization framework that can really drive off-site uh, solutions so that you can extend not only, you can be the retailer that not only has your on-site you know, search and app and whatever you have from your site, but also utilizing to create a new revenue stream um, off-site as well. So. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Exactly the same. Uh, no, so Comcast, uh, we are so a performance uh, and audience focused uh, DSP. And uh, like I think the origin of Comcast is quite important was uh, Comcast measure. So that was offering publisher uh, to get to better know their audiences. So thanks to that, we have a lot of first party data. Uh, and, uh, and for us, it's really to try to find the, now we evolved as well uh, as a DSP. And so for us, it's really to try to to answer any client outcomes by finding the right uh, format, the right placement uh, through our 
suppliers, FSP suppliers, as well as uh, publishers. Yeah. Wonderful. And Brian, how are you uh, finding the world of curation? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, Brian Ganzis, Managing Director of SeaTag in the US. Um, we're a nine-year-old company, if you haven't heard of us before. Uh, we just opened the US market about a year ago. 50 people on the ground now. Um, we were born in Contextual, um, and it's, a, uh, it's the supreme focus of everything that we do uh, at SeaTag. And when we think about curation, I think about collecting, organizing, maintaining stuff, right? But we do it in the contextual, uh, the contextual category. And the important aspect of it all is understanding. And using AI, we have a human level understanding of all the things that we're looking at, that we're measuring, that we're optimizing against. Um, and it's really the biggest buzzword of can is AI, for sure. But we've been doing this for a long time. And it's that network level analysis, this universal understanding of kind of what people are reading, what people are listening to, that allows us to do a number of things. One, we can better plan for our customers. We've got a detailed brief, we can build a custom segment. We can better activate for them. Bring them in media. Let's go find those people in uh, you know, high quality brand safe environments. But it's really the feedback loop where I can go and optimize against their strategy. I can tell them new places to go to, new ways to think about their audiences, new way to take share. And when I think about curation, that's the whole point, is I need to understand it all, not just collect it, and then give my customer a next best action to further their, um, further their strategy. And so that's what we think about curation, that's what we're doing at CTA. Awesome. And Tara, from an agency perspective, how are you using curation to, to benefit the business? Yeah, this is Tara from Curation. Uh, I think for us it's more so looking at it through uh, the advertiser landscape. You know, we look after global clients. Uh, so how do we buy the best quality inventory through the most direct routes with the best targeting? Um, especially as we move into a featureless world, like how do we work better with, with uh, curation partners who can offer us a more bespoke tailored approach for our clients, um, but also leveraging the first party data of publishers um, and like overlaying that contextual piece as well is quite key for us as well. And I guess, you know, not just contextual in the traditional form of contextual where it's just keyword targeting, like how bespoke can we go? Uh, what level can we look at page content and be able to buy that all in one place for our global clients? Um, and scale it as well. And that's really interesting. From an, from an advertiser lens, are advertisers asking for, for curation? Are they understanding what the value of curation can bring? Or is it more of an internal way of working to achieve the same results? Yeah, I, I, well, I think for us as a business, it's very much so about being best in class to be able to do these things. You know, as a global team, we need to be paving the way for the rest of the agency in terms of how we do these things. Um, I think clients are asking for it. Some of the savvy clients are aware of what it is. They're asking questions about the quality of the inventory, how we're buying it, why we're buying it that way, especially as we are an addressable team. Um, but then I guess on the other side of it, you do have clients who don't really know what curation is, but they are asking for it in other ways. Um, they you know, really want to understand where they're buying their media. Um, they want to understand it a lot better and they're quite interested in, in the inventory that they're buying and want to know exactly what that looks like. So w w we have a sales team, you know, within Autogen, we have a sales team that is basically that covers both and the call on both brand and agencies. And what we see is for the, uh, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the team, for the brand or agency that is just starting out, you know, what do they care about? They want performance and they want scale at that performant level that is driving it. Now, when you start peeling back the onion, what you see is that they also start asking questions about, they want to know that the supply chain is clean. They want to know that the data is wholesome. They want to know that it is fraud free. They want to know, they want to know all of those things. And that becomes critical because by curating both supply and the data with this, what you have is you have the ability to truly instrument a supply chain for that brand or for that agency in exactly the way that they are trying to go to market, whether that's Automotive, whether that's travel, whether that's you know retail, whatever that is, um, the 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 concept of curation gives you that capability to really drive and drive a real solution for them that meets their goals, whatever they might be. And that's it. Sorry, 
<laughs> Thank you. Um, and that's quite interesting because it feels like we talk about curation as a bit of a silver bullet for, for solving for many of the challenges that advertisers have, that businesses have, um, you know, that publishers do. It is the entire advertising ecosystem. What, therefore, are the challenges with every new technology platform um, or, you know, just way of working operationally? There's, there's challenges involved. What would you highlight? Thank you. Yeah, uh, I think there are a few challenges. Um, I think one of them is uh, really marrying the, the scale and the performance. Mm. That can be quite difficult. Uh, there is also the time that it's taking to create inventory. Sometimes it's long, you need a lot of resources. Uh, and the fact as well that none of the, the industry is really curating the same way and understanding curation the same way. So sometimes if you speak to different people, it would mean something else. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. And can I be bold? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Do it. I mean, one of the challenges of curation is this is the job of the agency to aggregate inventory, to work with supply partners, and to make decisions on what different partners should they should work with, right? To connect audiences. And there are a lot of people in the ecosystem right now that are not providing value, and they curate and agencies work with them. And the whole movement around SPO could eliminate, hopefully, a lot of these kind of shell companies that really aren't adding a lot of value. So I think one of the biggest challenges for companies today, hopefully I'm saying something you agree with, um, is that you've gotta provide value. You've gotta come out with unique data. You have to do something differently. You can't just try and replace the agency because the agencies are the experts in all of this, right? Um, and it's not, a, it's not an outsourcing of talent. You gotta come with unique data, a unique perspective, a unique recommendation. It's gotta be custom, it's gotta be focused on the client. And I don't think a lot of people are doing that right now. There's a lot of noise. And everyone's chatting about AI and all this other stuff. You know, my recommendation is peel back the onion, look under the covers, and the companies that have been doing it a long time, they can make those recommendations our audiences at are the, are, the, are the true partners that are out there. Interesting. Tara, did you want to? Uh, yeah, sure. I guess, like, yeah, some parts of it is true. You know, we, we do try to curate and have been trying to do it. Um, I guess specifically when it comes to programmatic, there are challenges, uh, platform challenges, without naming any in particular. Uh, but it's very difficult to buy through certain sources, to scale out, uh, to be able to spend, which, you know, is key for us as agencies as well. Um, so yeah, so th that's some of the challenges, kind of to your point as well, like the time that goes into it, um, the education as well when it comes to clients. Uh, you know, we work with global clients, so it's a different perspective and different markets and what that looks like. Um, what I would say though is that with curation, it has really empowered agencies to have a better relationship when it comes to exchanges um, and be able to buy better quality media with preferred partners and be able to uh, leverage the tools that they have um, in place to be able to like overlay you know, contextual targeting or data, whatever the case may be, to, to drive better outcomes for clients. And that's really interesting. I find from a multi-local perspective, things you touched upon about resource um, and operationalizing curation can be quite tricky. And we provide that out of solutions to start enabling people to, to use curation in innovative ways to drive more revenue into their business. Um, but why are PMPs so notoriously difficult? <laughs> I thought they were meant to be like a solving, and as we move into this space, how, how do we, I know I'm going a bit left field here, but go on, Greg, how do we actually unlock more of the opportunity um, in that respect? Oh, man. I mean, come on. Who, who, who out there has troubleshot a PMP in, in their past? I have. It's miserable. Um, no, I, I think, look, the, the, the promise of PMPs literally a decade ago when they were created was a one-to-one -one mapping with the with the buyer, from, from seller, publisher, to a buyer. And uh, frankly, the concepts and the business alignment around curation and where it is, it has far evolved the technology and the aspects of what they are using the concept of a deal ID for now. And so, because now what do you have? You have one to many, you have many to one, you have many to many, you have uh, inventory scale challenges, you have well, so-and-so is blocking this buyer. You have demand path opto. You have supply path opto. Like, there's so many challenges with it. And so what 
curation does is it allows you to have in our world, in the audigent world, a tech layer that you as the brand or the agency can come in and utilize so that you are, you are utilizing um, and working with people that are working through APIs, that have troubleshooting guides, that have real-time integrations around real-time segmentation. You have all of that. And we're doing that because the nature of the BMP has been a challenge for literally a decade and a half. So. Um, are, you, are, you are you finding something similar in terms of being able to unlock that potential when it comes to the uptake of BMP? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. I think. Um, yeah, What's sure your what's approach? <laughs> Um, well, a lot of different things, of course, a lot of tools, as we are speaking, AI, etc. really strong brand safety, broad tools. For us, it was particularly important, for instance, for CTV inventory, like there is not so much fraud uh, in that uh, industry, in that space, that uh, we had to curate everything. We don't operate on open markets. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really yeah, getting to know really well uh, the people we are working with, and I think one of the, the key thing as well is to validate, uh, to prove mm -hmm. the effectiveness of what you created, etc. So, yeah, measuring and validating. Okay. Um, <laughs> In terms of everyone here today, you know, we've got a mixed bag of some people using curation, not others. What is that? I'm going to ask each of you because you've got such varying perspective, but what's the um, single piece of advice you could give to, to everybody here on how to adopt curation into the business to really add value? Tara, do you want to take uh, that? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I guess kind of to go back to some of the points it, uh, around, you know, be there being some... Not you, no. Sound in the middle of the room. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess like it, you know, you need to look at the wider picture. You can't use the same technologies. You can't use the same targeting. You need to be open to letting the curated marketplaces, whatever the case may be, be the source of truth for the inventory that you're buying, and not try to overlay different technologies that just don't complement each other. Um, I think that has been a massive challenge for us. Uh, and it's something that we're still trying to overcome and educate clients with. Again, when you work on the demand side, it's a bit more difficult because you are plugging into multiple different platforms. Um, so it's, it's around that education piece and really understanding what exactly curation is, how it happens, and how it's different from the historical way of working. Yeah, that makes sense. Brian, anything to, to add? Yeah, I mean, curation without something unique added to it, anyone can do that, yeah. right? There's off-the-shelf data that you can buy, there's inventory that you can bring together. Anyone can be a curator. Everybody's in the media business these days. Retail, media, network, look at it, right? So if you want to be successful in this, you got to bring something unique, right? What we bring unique is an understanding of what's happening contextually, right? We think this is a huge, important moment in time when, I mean, I've been doing addressable targeting for the last 15 years. I you know, was involved in a lot of uh, pioneering companies that were focused on resolving the injury individually. And I kind of had this epiphany over the last year, or maybe that wasn't the right way to go about <laughs> connecting with people and their passions and their values and what's important to them. And only when you can really understand what they're reading and watching truly, right, at, at, at that deep, you know, at that deep contextual level, can you, can you have that moment in time where you can deliver a message and, and, and drive attention and, and action, right? That's the power of contextual. And when we think about, we think about, um, we think about curation, we don't curate data. We curate understanding of content and what everyone cares about, connecting the dots, and it is data, right? But it's not data on the individual, it's data on in that, that content, right? That understanding. And I don't think anyone's doing that. And when you marry that with first party data and you curate that together, that's a story, right? That's a story about a person and the media and that moment in time where you can have an effective message. 
So it's an incredibly exciting time, and using AI to kind of uh, do it in a way that's inclusive and without bias and kind of looks at the larger global picture is, is truly fascinating and exciting to be a part of in media. And curating that together, I think, is you know, what a lot of the agencies need that expertise and need that unique insight, because that can help you win new business, be more strategic with your clients, drive better outcomes. I would say for, for me as well, like a, a really important point is uh, collaboration and discussion, really trying to understand uh, the, the client KPIs, like why do they do curation? Is it for performance? Is it for transparency, SPOs, etc.? So really adding a dialogue with the, the client we are working with uh, to, to curate as best as possible based on, on what they want. So, and also refining things and not staying static. Once you curate, you need to you know, validate and, and, um, and optimize what you are doing. So moving and discussing. Yeah, I, I agree. This, this curation is, uh, you know, we're in the stage of curation where it's still hard. Uh, we are early, we're in the early innings of curation and there's gonna be a lot more maturity around it and the, there's, you know, you're kind of in the wild west of how you integrate, how you read data, how you think about it. It's sort of the next wave in our world of programmatic and where it goes. And so our, you know, our, our best piece of advice is, look, there's, there's experts out there and work with the experts if you're just starting out. That means people that have technology that you can, that will show you under the hood and be transparent. That means people that will show you and help you take your goals and optimize. That means people that will show you exactly how it works and then help you ultimately achieve what you're trying to do from that curation perspective and show you that path to help execute. Thanks, Greg. And um, fantastic points, I think, made by everybody. I want to touch upon something you mentioned there about curation kind of being quite nascent still in the way it's been operated. What does, and we're, we're here to talk a bit about the evolution of that, what, what is next for curation? Like, you know, yeah, we're still learning our way, we're still finding our feet, but w what's the power of the technology that we can set upon these platforms to really bring value to, to everyone in the ecosystem? What are your thoughts? I think, look, where, where there is investment, uh, there, is, uh, there is attraction. And so what the first thing that we need, I look at it in different hierarchies, the first thing that we need is adoption of people willing to try it and people trying to understand it more. And that means uh, that is key for the brands, agencies, publishers, whoever wants to become a curator and look at new revenue streams. The second aspect of that is really where we need to be is a set of standards that we can all apply and, and, and work with and adhere to because you work, you know, when, when you're working across the, uh, literally the sea of the ecosystem, everybody thinks of curation differently. So the definitions, the standards, everything like that needs to be the same. Um, and then finally, you know, as Brian was alluding to, like you gotta drive real AI into this whole process and real optimization, utilizing algos and utilizing ML and utilizing AI around all of that. And you know, and it, again, it's early days and like, you know, look how far we've come in a decade just in programmatic in general uh, and think about curation and how far we're gonna be in two years, three years, five years from now. Any, uh, anyone to add to, to where they see it going, Brian? I'd say, the future happens slow, and then it happens fast, right? We've been talking about AI for years now, um, and now it's the hottest topic in can, you know, it's in mainstream press, right? Um, you know, I think one of the most interesting aspects of everything happening too, that's kind of the underlying current of it all is privacy regulation. I think people are way more cognizant of how they're being tracked around the internet, Spotify just got sued by the Stockholm, uh, Sweden, the home country, sued them for, f uh, and, and, and won a five million euro uh, judgment. Um, Google's been sued, Meta's been sued, right? There's eight different US states that have different privacy laws right now. The consumer's kind of fighting back, right? So we've gotta, we've gotta put our consumer hat on. We have to think about how we're using their data and, and be very purposeful uh, and, and, and can't forget about that, right? 
So that's kind of number one with privacy. Uh, and two is, and this is again a personal passion of mine is, we also have to make sure that what we're doing also makes a better experience for the user, yeah. right? Like we can't sit up here on a panel in can <laughs> and talk about new monetization strategies and how we're gonna launch another ad format, and new curation. If we're gonna clutter up another page mm. and we're gonna shove more ads into CTV, right? We're just gonna destroy our industry, yeah. right? Like let's for once think about the consumer and, and make a better experience. And it's not a more targeted ad is a better experience. It's, you know, better use of, you know, privacy compliant, you know, non, you know, tracking, um, you know, more organic, more relevant messaging. Mm -hmm. That will drive the results that agencies want, that advertisers want. And it'll make a better experience for all of us. Yeah. So, like, I, I, I think about that every day of my job mm. is not just how I deliver for my customers, but how I better make a better experience for users. Because if we don't do that, mm. none of this matters. So. Is it, no, it's true. It's, it's such a good point. And something Greg touched upon as well in terms of just making sure that there is a better user experience, that there is opportunity for us to use curation in new and different ways to be able to, to drive that value. Um, Tara, what are, you, what are you seeing in terms of the, the evolution and what's next with curation? Yeah, I mean, this, you know, it, it's, it's quite a broad term, isn't it, curation? Yeah. And there's lots of different partners doing lots of different things and there's not really a consistent way. So kind of back to your point, as an agency, we need to own it a bit more. Mm -hmm. And for us at Dentsy, we're working on DMX, which is our solution for curation, to standardize it, but still offer that bespoke offering to our clients at scale. Um, so I think, you know, there does need to be a certain standardization of it, whether it's on an agency level or an industry level, in terms of what it is. Um, I think, you know, contextual has been a buzzword for a couple of years since the announcement of cookie-less world. And yeah. um, what that is is very broad as well. There's so many different concepts of what that is. So I think yeah. curation is very similar to that and it's something that we need to make sure we have a definitive answer on. Um, and I think education is quite key as well. Um, to fully understand exactly how it works uh, internally, but also to our clients as well, yeah. to make sure we're getting the best out of it. And that makes sense. And who would you say is responsible for that standardization? Like, uh, if you're looking at that across the industry, does there need to be more of a... I, I said, ooh, that's a good, hard question. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I think, you know, what, what happened in the early programmatic days what happened in the early programmatic days was everybody came together and created the open RTD spec, right? And you know perhaps we need to take a look at the open RTD spec and look at adaptions to that um, and how we would operate that, whether that is a regulatory body or whether that's a group of industry leaders that come together, like doesn't matter, we've got to do that. I think it's quite difficult to standardize it when there's things like attention that can also play into curation attention as a metric is defined very differently across the industry as well. So there's a, there's a lack of standardization within measurement and targeting that makes curation as a whole very difficult to standardize. Yeah, that's true. Marie, any, anything to add from your Comcast perspective on, on that evolutionary piece, where you see it going? Uh, yeah, for, for us, I think it's yeah, really going to, to marry the, um, the, the, the client audiences with publisher first party data, data because again, we, we have a lot of data on our site mm -hmm. from the publisher side. So I think um, we will definitely, we are uh, developing those kind of things already, but basically through our platform, you can, you can plan uh, through specific uh, audiences that you are targeting. And then we would like to offer some specific inventory um, uh, that is attached to the, the, the our, our customer audiences. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot uh, around this for us. Yeah, that's really interesting. Well, thank you. Thank you for all the amazing questions that you've answered and opinions and that kind of education around curation. I think we're yet to define. There's a lot of challenges, but it feels like curation is going to gain a lot of traction and maybe uh, we'll, we'll be talking a lot more about it over the next year. With that in mind, I'd just like to open up the floor to questions. Anyone in the audience? Everyone? Come on, Julia. <laughs> Perfect. Do you know what? We've all actually nailed what curation is. But my question is, why? what's the biggest misconception you've heard about curation? 
What is it not? I'm, I'm looking really for what, for some reason, people seem to get it so wrong. What do you know? Uh, I think the worst one that I've had is that it's a site list. Uh, so, yeah, it's a bit, a bit of a hard one to explain. The, my, my favorite is when somebody says, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to curate, and they go get one, one seller and one buyer, and they say they're curating. That's called a direct buy. <laughs> Last I checked, but, you know, whatever. That's great. Any, any other questions? From me? Oh, no, I thought you were putting your hand up. Come on. <laughs> That's great. I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone for joining me up here and for you guys as well for, for coming to the panel today. Amir, did you want to say a few words? Bar's open. Thank you. Come and join, have a chat around, and it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for joining.